Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I am sharing what I read in September. I read nine books in September. Three of them were for the Book 2 prize, so I will be reviewing reviewing those in a separate video that is going up. I think it's October 8th. That's the day that the final announcement of the winners of the prize are coming out. So those reviews are coming out that day and today I will talk about the other six books I read in September. So um, the first book I read was Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg. I had watched the movie previously so I knew kind of what the book would be about and the book follows a lot of the same beats as the movie but it is quite different in a couple of ways and it's something that I, I really loved. I loved the writing and the setting and all of the characters and I liked how the story was broken up. The events take place primarily in the 20s and 30s and there's also a, another story happening in the 1980s. So in the 1980s we are following a woman who is having a bit of a, a midlife crisis or she's coming to terms with the fact that she's lived her whole life for other people as a wife and mother. You know she was a good girl in school. She she lived life the way everyone else thought she should and she's coming to a point in her life where she doesn't really know who she is. So we're following her and she um, is visiting a nursing home and strikes up a bit of a, a friendship with uh, an elderly lady who was there who starts recounting stories from the 20s and 30s and onwards a bit um, of this small town in Alabama. We follow a lot of different characters and the town itself almost feels like a character in the book although we do the, the main kind of plot revolves around two women Iggy and Ruth who um, are friends and maybe more and probably more I think it's safe to say they are more and they own a a small cafe the Whistle Stop Cafe. Some things I liked about this were the kind of not only just the small town vibes, but how the small town kind of bands together at certain points. I also like parts of the story where we explore a little bit the, the power that women can hold even at this time and how women in the story are carving room for themselves. It left me with a bit of a bittersweet feeling at times, but I think overall it was a feel-good type of story. The next book I read on audio and I read it for Middle Grade Magic. I think that's the name of the read readathon. Um, I love a good <laughs> middle grade so I read President of the Whole Fifth Grade by Sherry Winston and it was um, narrated by Jonice Abbott Pratt. I would say that I had a mixed experience with this book. I think this is one of those middle grades that doesn't like transcend the audience. So I don't know that most grown-ups would get on with it. I thought it was fine. I think as a younger reader, I would have really enjoyed it. I had a couple of minor problems with it, but overall, I really liked the characters and the overall message. It's about a girl who wants to be president of the fifth grade slash president of the school, and she has these ambitions um, to be like rich and famous. She wants to emulate her idol who is this famous baker. She has like a baking show and like recipe books and stuff like that. And this girl, Brianna, in the book wants to become like her. She wants to be famous and have a, a baking show where she teaches people how to bake cupcakes. She wants this cupcake empire. And because her idol had gone to this school and had been president of the fifth grade, she thinks that's what she has to do as well. So things I liked, I loved Brianna's ambition. She talks a lot about like setting goals and how she's going to achieve what she wants to achieve in life. I liked a lot of the parts of the book surrounding friendship and what it means to be a good friend, although I had a couple problems which I'll talk about in a second, but overall I liked the kind of like friendship vibes and that along with her ambition she also really valued her friends. So the couple of little problems I had with it are that so 
Brianna kind of gets really into the selection and she makes some mistakes, but she is depicted in the book as being too focused on the election and kind of forgetting the importance of other things, of her friends and, and losing sight of what's important. But I don't think she did. And I think her friends were a little bit awful and not supportive of her in certain aspects. There's kind of an antagonist who might steal the election away from Brian Brianna. And this antagonist does like mean things and Brianna's friends like won't believe her or or just kind of say like, oh, well, she's new in school. You should give her a chance. I just don't think they had her back. So I didn't appreciate that point. And the other part that actually bothered me a little bit more was the fact that there is a part in the book where one of the kids has to be taught a lesson because they did something very wrong and their parent finds out about it and their parent decides to teach them a lesson in a very mean-spirited way. An adult should be helping you through that to see why that was wrong and not turning around and basically doing the same thing back to their own kid in order to like embarrass them and send them a message. So mixed reviews. I think overall it's a good book for kids, but there are a couple parts there that I had a problem with. The next book I read is Mort by Terry Pratchett. This is the fourth in the Discworld series, but it's the first in the Death subseries. It's about a boy called Mortimer or Mort and he becomes Death's apprentice. And on his first job, he kind of makes a bit of a mess of it for kind-hearted reasons, but it starts the whole plot where he is trying to clean up his mistake. His mistake, which ends up being a huge, huge deal in the world of life and death. As always, I thought this was really funny. I thought the plot was fun. I thought the characters were fun. And I just always have a good time reading Pratchett. You don't have to start with the first Discworld book. You can start here. You can start anywhere. Um, I have enjoyed them all. I think the first and second book are still my favorites, which I think I'm in the minority there, but I just really love Rincewind and the Rincewind books the most. But I enjoyed this and I think I will overall really enjoy the Death subseries as well. The next book I read is The Test by Sylvain Nivelle. I am not going to talk a lot about this because I read this as an audiobook and it was only two hours and I think the physical book is around the 100 page mark. So saying too much will give away basically the whole thing. I've just realized that I forgot to make note of the uh, narrator for the audiobook so I will make sure that that is in the description. So all I'm really going to say is my thoughts and also give you the premise of this book because I don't want to spoil anything. So the premise is that um, the main character goes to take a test, to take his citizenship test. Um, he is an immigrant from, I th oh, am I forgetting? I think it was Iran, if I remember correctly. And he and his family have been living in the UK for a few years and so he is going to take this test um, so that they can become British citizens. As he's taking the test a bunch of people in ski masks and guns run into the building and take everyone there hostage and that's how the story gets started. The story tries to examine how you know who you are as a person and how much an experience can change how you view yourself. The author had a clear idea of what he wanted in the story and he got in and got out and there was no fluff and that's how it should be. There was nothing else to say so I think um, I didn't it didn't blow my mind but I thought it was a solid thriller and I really liked the kind of um, extra elements put in it. That's all I'll say. The next book I read was The Subtweet by Vivek Shreya and this was my favorite read of the month, although the next book I'm talking about um, I also really enjoyed, but this was also a surprise because I thought I would get along with the writing. I've, re I've read um, Shreya's nonfiction book um, memoir uh, called I'm Afraid of Men, and I really enjoyed it, but I was a little bit unsure because of the plot of this. It was intriguing, but it's a contemporary book kind of about the internet and social media and I wasn't sure I was going to get along 
terribly well with that, but I ended up loving it. I am actually not going to talk a lot about this book here because I intend to do a separate video about this book and what I enjoyed about it. It will be a spoiler free review of the book. So look out for that if you're interested to know more. I will tell you what it's about. It's about two women, one of whom is a musician. This is set in Toronto. And the other is a arts music journalist and also a cover artist. And she covers one of the musician's songs. And the cover goes viral and it ends up becoming a bigger hit than the original song ever was. And I just like how this explored like jealousy, but also friendship. And yeah, that's all I'll say about it here. I will make another video talking just about this book. The last book I read, I also really enjoyed, and that's The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is a science fiction. It is about a man who has realized that he has dreams. So not all of his dreams, but every once in a while, he will have a dream that will change reality. So he will wake up and his dream has come true. He realizes it because he's dreamed it. But for everyone else, they don't remember the previous reality. This to them is how things have always been. He goes to see a psychiatrist who specializes in dreams and sleep because he wants to be cured. He doesn't want to be responsible for the things that happen while he's dreaming. The psychiatrist doesn't really seem to be interested in curing him of this ability to change reality. He thinks it could be used for good, that you could figure out how to basically plant a dream in this man and change the world for the better. I think there's a lot you can kind of dig into. There's a lot of subtext about our own personal responsibility, individual responsibility to the world, what we owe others, how much agency do we have, and how do we use the power that we hold. There's also commentary in here about whether or not ends justify means. I thought it was a very short but very effective book and gives you a lot to think about. Those were the books I read in September. If you've read any of them and would like to share your opinion, I would love to talk about any of these books with you in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll chat soon. Take care. Bye.